In this video, we'll look at a technique for solving nonlinear systems of equation. After studying this video, you should be able to identify when a system of equations is nonlinear, and then describe how the Newton Raphson iteration algorithm that we looked at for roots problems can be extended to systems of equations. We'll want to implement that Newton Raphson algorithm by using analytical derivatives to formulate the Jacobian matrix and understand how to implement the newton raphson method for a system of equations on MATLAB. So let's start by thinking about what it means for an equation to be nonlinear. So recall a linear system of equations where we have n, we might have an n by n system, n equations with n unknowns, and each equation is a linear combination of constants times x. And we wrote that in matrix form ax equals b. That system becomes nonlinear if one or more of the n equations contains one or more nonlinear functions of one or more of the x values. So all we need is one nonlinear term in that whole system, and the entire equation becomes a nonlinear system. So some examples of nonlinear terms would be x raised to some power. So if we had like x1 cubed in there, or x3 raised to the one-third or any sort of x to some power or some product of x values. It could be x1 times x2 or x1 times x3 squared or any combination like that. Or some other mathematical function is in the system like an e to the x1 or something like tangent of x1 squared times x3, we can have all sorts of nonlinear terms that show up. And as soon as that nonlinear term comes in, we can no longer do this as a matrix system and we need to take a new approach. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So one approach is called successive substitution. And to see how that works, let's consider the following model problem. And the idea here is very similar to what we did for linear systems with Gauss-Seidel. So what we would do is take this first equation, solve it for x1, so we could say x1 is equal to 10 minus x1 squared over x2, and solve the second equation for x2, and we get that is equal to 57 minus 3x1 times x2 squared. And then start with initial guesses and use our updated value for later equations. And we can do something analogous. It's going to be analogous to Gauss-Seidel. for linear systems. But this is a nonlinear system and it actually has very different behavior. So we could imagine plugging in initial guesses, iterating through, continuing until the absolute value of the approximate relative error is less than some stopping criterion for all x. And you should be able to see how that extends the Gauss-Seidel idea to a nonlinear system. But we've got some problems with successive substitution. First of all, it turns out that the convergence behavior depend, really depends on how the equations are formulated for the iteration scheme. So we might have a situation where if we solve for x1 with uh, this first option, maybe it converges. And then we solve for it with this next option, and it doesn't converge. And that's not a very robust algorithm if it depends on if its behavior depends on what algebra choices we make in formulating the problem. Another issue is that convergence can be slow if the iteration converges at all. Recall that Gauss-Seidel for a diagonally dominant system would converge very quickly. There's nothing in this case nothing analogous to diagonal dominance. So we can't guarantee convergence and also convergence can be very sensitive 
to the initial guesses. Basically, the initial guesses need to be close. And if you have really close guesses, then why do you need to solve for it in the first place? So let's look at another approach. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to expand the Newton-Raphson algorithm we looked at for roots problems for systems of equations. So the way to think about that is we will simultaneously solve for n roots problems of the form f, so we have n of these, where each problem is written as a function of all of the independent variables is equal to zero. Recall in our original formulation we were solving for a single roots problem written as f of x equals zero. So to see how we can expand newton raps into a system of equations, let's first go back and consider a Taylor series expansion for the i-th iteration of a one variable system. So our original roots problem f of x equals zero. So we can do that for the i-th iteration writing this Taylor series where we have the function evaluation f plus, and this would be the next guess, and x1i would be the current guess. Again, the i here stands for the ith iteration. And multiply that times the derivative and this Taylor series approximation gives us the value of f at the next iteration. We can go back and derive newton raphson by basically neglecting this term, the second derivative term of the Taylor series, and all of the, the HOT stands for higher order terms. So when we neglect all of those, remember the whole idea of newton raphson was to use the slope of the derivative to solve for the next guess, just to give us a more informed next guess. So it's not a big deal to neglect all of this higher order terms and use the rest. Solving for x i plus 1, we get x 1 i plus 1 is equal to x 1 i minus um, uh, sorry, the, we're trying to get to the root of zero. I forgot to mention, so we're going to say that is equal to zero because that's what we want our function evaluation to be. So that's equal to zero. So then we bring over the fi, f1i. and then divide by that derivative, df1i by dx1. And that gets us the same result that we derived with an alternate derivation earlier in the quarter. So that's how we can derive a newton raphson for a single variable system from the Taylor series. And let's look at how we can expand that to a two-variable system. Okay, so now let's expand this idea to a two-variable system. So we'll have a function, roots problem, f1 of x1 and x2 equal to 0, and f2 of x1 and x2 equal to 0. So we'll start with the Taylor series expansion for the i-th iteration of the two-variable system. And maybe you haven't seen a Taylor series in two variables before, but it's basically the same idea, but now we are using partial derivatives here for each for the function with respect to each variable, each independent variable in the system. And again, here's our higher order terms that we will neglect. So we will neglect those higher order terms. And we know that those new root estimates are going to be where the functions are equal to zero or where that slope crosses the x-axis just like for one variable. So we're going to substitute in 0 for the i plus 1 iteration of f. And then let's collect all of the i plus 1 terms to the left-hand side. And so on the left-hand side, we're going to have df1i 
by dx1 times x1 i plus 1 plus df 1i dx2 times x2 i plus 1 is equal to negative f 1 sub i plus, and I'm switching things, I'm switching the signs around as well as I do this, um, but you should be able to follow the negative sign. So the negatives, all, everything that's on positive on the right hand side is going to become uh, negative on the right hand side since so that this term can be positive on the left hand side. So we have plus df1 sub i dx1 times x1 sub i plus df1 sub i dx2 times x2 sub i. And we'll do the same thing for the second one. So again, we'll have df2 sub i dx1 times x1 sub i plus 1 plus df2 sub i dx2 times x2 sub i plus 1 and that's going to be equal to negative f2 sub i plus df2 sub i dx1 times x1 sub i plus df1 sub i dx2 times x2 sub i. And now what we have, it may not look like it right now, but this is actually a linear system of equations for the next guess. And again, the next guess, what we're trying to do is determine what's our next guess for x1i plus 1 and x2i plus 1. And we just have all of these partial derivatives these are just the partial derivative evaluated at the current iteration. So those are just constants. And everything on the right hand side, this is all going to be constants. The guesses in the current iteration, the function value in the current iteration, and the partial derivatives of the current iteration. So we can write this all in matrix form. And we'll write this in matrix form. So we have this matrix of the partial derivative valuations times the vector of our new guesses and then we have on the right hand side we have our function evaluations and then this product of that matrix again times our current guesses and this matrix has a special name this is called the Jacobian matrix we'll call it J and there it is again terms from the Jacobian matrix and so we can write this in vector notation as J I the matrix J Jacobi matrix times the vector of, an, of new guesses X I plus 1 is equal to negative F I so function evaluations at the current iteration plus the Jacobian matrix again evaluated at the current iteration so both of these are at the current ith iteration times x sub i which is our current guesses okay and so basically what we can do to solve this is write this as j sub i times x i plus 1 minus x i is equal to negative f sub i and if we just call this j sub i times some delta x sub i is equal to negative f sub i and solve for that change in x. Delta x is now solving a linear system for delta x. And we have MATLAB, so we can solve that linear system 
for example, uh, using left division as a good way to go. So we'll see how more about that in a minute, but let's talk, come back and talk about formulating this Jacobian matrix. So let's go back to that model problem and apply newton raps into that model problem. So our first step is going to be to write the system in the form of two roots problems. So to write the system in the form of two roots problems, what I will do is just write the first equation as x1 squared plus x1 x2 minus 10 is equal to 0. And the second one, x2 plus 3 x1 x2 squared minus 57 is equal to 0. Now we need to compute those partial derivatives for the Jacobian. So we'll have df1 dx1, and that's going to be... 2x1 plus x2 df1 dx2 and that's going to be that term goes away it's just going to be x1 df2 dx1 is going to be just 3x squared 3x2 squared and df2 dx2 is going to be 1 plus 6 times x1 x2. So those would be our those would be our Jacobian elements and now we can just iterate that on MATLAB again so we have the Jacobian times the difference call this delta x is equal to negative of the function evaluations. So on MATLAB, the implementation there, just using left division, is as follows. dx is equal to j, left division, negative f, and then x new is equal to x old, plus that dx. And finally, just iterate until that approximate relative error is less than epsilon s, the stopping criterion for all the x's. So we'll look at that MATLAB implementation in an example uh, in the next video actually, but before we do that let's look at just expanding this one more time to n equations. And I'm not going to go through in detail, but the basic idea is we start with that Taylor series approximation and it results in this following system. So again, here I've brought over all of the i plus 1 terms to the left-hand side. And now this is going to let us write it in the form, the Jacobian times x i plus 1, where this is our vector of new guesses, is equal to negative times the vector of the function evaluations plus the Jacobian times our vector of old guesses. And again, that Jacobian matrix is going to have that general form where each column corresponds to what function, which variable we're taking the derivative of. So this is all with respect to dx1 in the first column, dx2, dx3, and so on. And in fact, there's an error right here that should be dxn. And then the uh, each row is going to be, that's for function f1, this is for function f2, etc. A couple of notes on implementation of newton raphson for nonlinear systems. So computing that Jacobian by hand, it, it can be tedious. So imagine even a 3 by 3 system, right? A 3 by 3 system is going to be 9 derivatives, df dx. So that can be a little tedious. Um, doing a lot of analytical work by hand before we're able to implement the algorithm. So one thing that we can do is use finite difference approximations and the way to do that is we'll introduce a slight perturbation. Call this a slight perturbation or just increase one of the variables a little bit. So here's x1 plus delta. So delta is going to be some really small number, like 1 times 10 to the minus 6. 
and use that to approximate that derivative. Recall, by definition, this would be exact if we take the limit, if we take that limit as delta goes to zero, this would be the exact definition of the partial derivative. So the convergence of newton raphson is still dependent on having reasonably close initial guesses, but it is much, much more reliable than that successive substitution approach that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And so we'll look at uh, two example videos coming up, one implementing newton raphson with an analytical Jacobian matrix and one with this finite difference approximation for the Jacobian matrix.